It is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have five pieces of information to cover today, including how a Three Gorges Dam collapse or more flooding could impact supply chains. Also, courtesy of brownfieldag.com, broker says China's flooding isn't moving markets yet. Next, courtesy of CNN, everything is gone. Flooding in China ruins farmers and risks rising food prices. We also found a picture via Twitter of a supposed block of concrete breaking away from the dam. And last but not least, a map showing the areas that would be affected if for some reason the dam did fail. And of course, we have some new footage playing in the background of today's video. Let's hop into it. And let's take a look at the status of the water level at the dam before we get started. The current water level at the Three Gorges Dam sits at 157.6 meters. The current inflow is listed at 26,500 cubic meters per second. And the current outflow stands at 32,000 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. And here's the translation of the tweet attached to the water level update. Good morning, Three Gorges. It seems that there is no intention of slowing the release even if the inflow to the dam decreases. Under the flooded town has poor drainage and green algae are generated, but something different should also be breeding. Korea is still tough today, but I like it. But I can see the spiral for a long time in the area between Chongqing and Shindu. Is it due to the terrain? And our first article comes courtesy of theprepared.com. How a Three Gorges Dam Collapse or More Flooding Could Impact Supply Chains For a few weeks now, we've had our eye on the Three Gorges Dam, a true feat of human engineering, and the largest hydroelectric dam in the world. The Three Gorges Dam generates 2% of China's electricity, and that's remarkable. But it's not why we've been watching the dam. China has experienced a lot of rain lately, and even though it's very hard to know what's actually happening with the dam and what the risks are, People have been worried about what all the rain could do. First of all, if the dam were to break, a lot of people would die very quickly, within hours. Then the resulting flood would devastate China. It would also have a significant impact on the rest of the world's already weakened supply chains. So this is a risk worth keeping an eye on and taking a few extra precautions for. Here are the highlights. Food prices and food security are already a problem as a result of the flooding in China. We'll likely feel those ripple effects in America. The actual collapse of the dam would devastate a critical part of many global supply chains, resulting in massive shortages of many categories of goods. There would also be a lot of financial market turmoil to navigate in the event of a collapse. It's very hard to gauge the current state of the dam since information about it is tightly controlled. And the author goes on to say, you should already be structuring your prepping in such a way that it takes into account ongoing supply chain disruptions and potential food price increases. But if you aren't, then this issue adds extra urgency. Now the author goes on to talk about the impact on supply chains and the world's economy. We don't ring the alarm when just any river floods or looks like it'll flood, but the Three Gorges Dam isn't situated in just any river. Some economists estimate that if the Yangtze River Basin were its own country, it'd have the third largest economy in the world. So if the dam breaks and the basin floods, the whole world would feel the impact. China is responsible for manufacturing almost a third of the world's products. More than half of that output happens in the Yangtze River Economic Basin, which would be flooded within a day if the Three Gorges Dam burst. So if the Three Gorges Dam breaks, somewhere around 15% of the world's manufacturing would stop. And now we're going to jump ahead in the article. How likely is the dam's collapse, really? For the past two months, the Yangtze River Basin has seen some significant rain. In fact, the area has had more rainfall this summer than it has in almost 60 years. The river has already started to overflow. And it's not that the people who live in the basin are sitting at home worrying about what might happen. Already this summer, CNN says 54.8 million people have been impacted by flooding, and nearly 4 million people have lost their homes. Last week, Typhoon Hagaput made landfall in eastern China. This typhoon was the fourth to hit China in 2020, and meteorologists expect two or three more in the rest of August. It's hard to know exactly how likely a dam collapse is. It's very hard to get good intel on the current state of the dam because it's such a big deal to China. Information is very tightly controlled, and that means rumors fly around online all the time. 
In July, pressure on the dam resulted in a slight deformation in the structure, the Guardian reported. Despite that damage, the dam has officially been declared safe. Still, aerial photographs of the dam have been limited in recent weeks, so it's hard to know how the dam is doing and what exactly the risks are. And our next article comes courtesy of brownfieldagnews.com. Broker says China's flooding isn't moving markets yet. A commodity broker says China's massive flooding has not affected corn and soybean prices. Carl Babbler with Babbler Risk Management tells Brownfield, I don't think that it's hit the radar hard in the commodity market yet. It's something people have been watching. Babbler says China's western and southwestern area where a lot of the flooding began is not their primary row crop region. But when you get a little further to the east and then a little further to the north, it's more grain production, which definitely can have some problems. Babbler says China's massive flooding might impact them beyond agriculture. If this thing gets out of hand over there, they're just going to have a lot of disruption and flood loss of economic and human toll rather than just agricultural. Babbler says China has had to deal with several things bombarding them all at once, including flooding, locusts, a massive army worm infestation, another swine flu outbreak, and the pandemic. But so far, most dams have held, including the Three Gorges Dam. He says China has been a steady and improving customer across a wide variety of commodities lately. Babbler expects they will continue to buy soybeans and hogs, and he's pleased they have been buying corn, which China has seldom done in the past. And our next article comes courtesy of CNN. Everything is gone, flooding in China ruins farmers and risks rising food prices. By this time of the year, the rice growing on Bao Wenzhou's family farm should have been ready to harvest. Instead, heavy flooding has engulfed huge swaths of southern China, including more than 36 acres of rice fields that 19-year-old Bao and his father tend to in their village near Poyang Lake. The crops have completely failed, Bao told CNN Business in an interview over the social media app WeChat, adding that his family has already lost roughly 200,000 yuan, that's $28,000 worth of produce. The rice was nearly ripened and ready to harvest before the flooding, but now everything is gone. Surging flood water burst the banks of Poyang Lake in Yangshi Province last month, destroying thousands of acres of farmland in what's known as the land of fish and rice. The broader Yangtze River Basin, which includes Poyang Lake and stretches more than 3,900 miles from Shanghai in the east to the Tibetan border in the west, accounts for 70% of the country's rice production. For farmers like Bao and his father, the damage has been devastating. Not only did the rainfall ruin crops that they were about to collect, but the scale of the flooding has made it impossible to salvage anything from this year. The land is still underwater, Bao said. That means we are not going to have any harvest for the entire year. The flooding that walloped Bao's farm and 13 million more acres of cropland, about the size of West Virginia, is the worst that China has experienced in years. China's Ministry of Emergency Management pegs the direct economic cost of the disaster at $21 billion in destroyed farmland, roads, and other property. Some 55 million people, including farmers like Bao, have been affected. The disaster is bad news for the world's second largest economy, which is already in a fragile state because of the pandemic. Beijing has so far been able to secure food supplies by importing vast amounts of produce from other countries and by releasing tens of millions of tons from strategic food reserves. But analysts warn that such measures can only be useful for so long. Tense relations between China and much of the Western world and the pandemic may make importing a lot of food trickier in the future. The flooding in China, meanwhile, could soon get much worse. Heavy rainfall is expected through much of this month, and Chinese officials have warned that the flooding could creep further north, threatening the country's wheat and corn harvests. The flooding is already among the worst since 1998, and could worsen in coming weeks, analysts from Nomura said in a note late last month. It's not entirely clear how much of China's food supply may be at risk, since the government hasn't released specifics about the current state of production. Beijing has responded to the crisis with attempts to stabilize food prices and boost supply, including by tapping into strategic reserves of food. Tens of millions of tons of rice, corn, and soybeans have been released into the market in recent months by the China Grain Reserves Corporation and the National Grain Trade Center, the two agencies that manage and sell state reserves of grain. 
So far this year, the agencies have released more than 60 million tons of rice, about 50 million tons of corn, and over 760,000 tons of soybeans, already surpassing the volumes released during the whole of 2019. Thanks to the release of those reserves, prices for rice have remained stable. Last week, the average price of a ton of rice nationwide was 4,036 yuan, that's $580 per ton, roughly what it was a month ago according to data from SCI. China is also increasing imports, especially from the United States. Beijing committed to buying billions of dollars worth of American goods as part of a truce in the trade war. In the first six months of the year, China imported nearly 61 million tons of grain, up 21% from a year earlier according to the most recently available Chinese customs data. Corn imports jumped 18% from a year ago, while purchases of soybeans and wheat also increased. The United States, Brazil, Ukraine, and France were among the biggest exporters. As for farmers like Bao, China has set aside some money for flood relief. As of mid-July, some 1.8 billion yuan, that's 258 million US dollars, had been allocated to help relocate people affected by the floods and rebuild ruined houses, among other measures. According to China's finance ministry, the local government in Yangshi province, where Bao lives, has allocated 280 million yuan, that's 40 million US dollars, for flood relief. But that's a drop in the bucket compared to the 21 billion worth of economic damage the flooding has already inflicted. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. And now a couple of pieces of information I found via Twitter. The first shows a supposed piece of concrete breaking away from the dam structure. And the second is a map of the areas that would be affected if for some reason the dam does fail. I wanted to include both pieces of information so that you could decide for yourself. And I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content. <laughs>